guys, it's Julesy, and it's time for another Pop Snark. We talk about everything from the low brow to the high brow. Wow, y'all, eyebrows are on fleek. Clink, 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 clank. This week I'm drinking a Bud Light Razzarita with some frozen raspberries in it and a lemon because I had to post an ad today for them because they love me. <laughs> Did you see it on Facebook or Twitter? That's why I posted it today. This week, so much has been going on. I had to like get my life together and really process it low key. I have been pretty proud this week because it has just been full of magical black girls who are repping strong for the smart brown girl movement. I would have a magical black girl shirt on, you know, if Evelyn ever got her life together, but hey girl. So let's start off with the most magicalest black girl of them all, Brie Newsom. I think I might actually get this picture printed and blown up on my wall. Brie. At the top of the flagpole, the Confederate flag that hangs over the South Carolina State Building. It just is such an epic picture that's like, it just personifies how active black women have been in this Black Lives Matter campaign. And not just active, but actually being the fuel that moves people into action. And I just want to give a shout out to her extra upper body strength. She inspired me to go do a couple extra push-ups during my P90X Warrior workout. With the most humility on top of it, like she was not doing it for show. For any of my audience who does not understand the history or the problem with the Confederate flag, I did do a video plus blog post that quickly encapsulates as much of the history as we could. What Brie did was an act of civil disobedience. Shout out to Thoreau, which we all learn about. I mean, at least I took AP English and AP US History in high school, and I definitely learned about it in both of those classes. Henry David Thoreau, the white man that would live out in the woods forever, however long. Don't don't give me the quote and shit. But white people love them some Thoreau. Brie knew some speak with a publication, and to quote her, I encourage everyone to understand the history recognize the problems of the present and take action to show the world that the status quo is not acceptable and that is like the pinnacle of the smart brown girl movement to think of how much she represents for the smart brown girl movement no one ever has the right to question what black women are doing because we are doing the damn thing and it's constantly us that are doing it without the need of recognition without the need of becoming twitter or whatever famous and trying to line our pockets with dollars because we really do support our own people Throughout history, it's been proven over and over again. And so I have seen the kind of random questionings that I get about, do I watch a certain other YouTuber, Sotomayor? I, I don't have a whole lot of rules about Smart Brown Girl, but you ain't no Smart Brown Girl if you support him, like flat out. I just don't, I, I have no, there. I have no understanding for your support of him. Absolutely, positively, 120%, eh uh eh. -uh. Effervescent magical black girl has been Janet Jackson, who is 49 years old and slaying all hopes and dreams and wet and wavy hair dude. Damn Janet. First of all, I've been playing the ish out of no sleep. I love it. BET announced that the BET Awards that we're gonna honoring Janet Jackson. We've all been kind of teetering, wondering how ratchet is this tribute gonna be? We got bamboozled into watching four hours of the BET Awards for a minute and a half dance tribute now we're not even going to talk about the sound issues that was happening how everybody was off key and maybe i mean i guess when you dancing as hard as janet you can't really be singing along the song janet does do a lot of lip syncing i'm not really mad at it like you know we're not really here because janet jackson is a great singer we just here because janet is janet and you really can't come for her like you just can't this was like sierra's chance to kind of like slay down and um I mean, I can't dance like that, but if I could, I could critique it. And I just wasn't, I still don't know who Tanash is. I don't know if I want to know who she is. Chris Brown just, Tracy Ross threw the most subtle of shade at him. And I was, girl, thank you. You did that. You know, honestly, the highlight for me was watching my daughter whip that nae on the stage with Silento. Yes, my daughter, she plays Diane on Blackish. You did not know Marseille Martin. Popped up out the bed, hit the rewind button just so I could hit that nae nae with her. Everyone was hyped about the bad boy reunion that happened on stage. They opened it up with Puffy coming out to the bad boy, the clink clink clank from Flavor in Your Ear. So I was just waiting for Craig Mack to come out because Flavor in Your Ear is one of my like favorite bad boy songs. Uh -huh. I'm not from Houston, but I rap a lot, pack the gat a lot, the flavor about to drop. Yo, little Kim coming out talking about, you want to bumble with the beat, huh? Huh? Put a hex on your whole family. I'm not even gonna act like I know what to My first hood crush ever was on the stage, Sheik Looch. 
Sheik Luch, is that how you said the nigga name? Donnie Gorillas, whatever he go by now. But you know, we gonna make it. It's like was like my jam when I moved to Brooklyn. Like like my entire like eight years that I spent living in Brooklyn, the theme songs that entire eight years was we gonna make it. There's been some humbug because the white kappa was invited out to uh, the BET Awards. You know, white mediocrity personified. I told y'all. Because I didn't see any of the black women who have been doing it for the Black Lives Matter campaign invited out to the BET Awards. Kendrick Lamar and we gonna be all right. Nigga, we gonna be all, I, I, first of all, I love this song. The video dropped to today and it dropped maybe like two hours ago. I've already watched it 10 times. This is why Pop Stark is getting up so late. Yes, thumbs up and the performance was awesome. Janelle Monae is always cute. Jadetta, you know, I like the classic man song, but there's just something about him that seems so inauthentic. Like he's just giving me so much fuckboy tease that I just can't really put, but I like the song. The spirit animal of all magical black girls, Nina Simone, look. I am a big fan of Nina Simone and what she stood for. And um, Netflix just dropped their original documentary, I guess, on what happened, Miss Simone. That kind of chronicles the, Oh girl, it's the ugh, the rough, the fight that basically Nina went through to be her and be herself, you know. She was a classically trained pianist who really took the heart of the civil rights movement and personified that through her music. And you know, her husband and manager was abusive. You know, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder in the late 80s. I had a few issues with kind of how they described her relationship with her husband Andrew Stroud and kind of like but I don't know you know I wasn't in her life either so I can't I don't know for it's like for her daughter who's really kind of stood up for her legacy to say that her mother would go after her father and kind of like she like Nina felt like she deserved the abuse you know that's a rough one yeah it, it wasn't even, it wasn't super depressing for me <laughs> interestingly enough they do talk about how nina simone moved to liberia at the behest of her friend Miriam makiba now i have read Miriam makiba's um biography makiba it was in my 2013 um book list of books recommended books to read and you want to talk about tragic life you want to talk about harsh you want to talk about oh i like i could never like all my life i had to fight plus some Marion Makiba. And interestingly enough, she was living in Liberia because she was exiled from South Africa at the time and was unable to tour in the United States because of her marriage to Stokely Carmichael, who was considered a terrorist because he was a member of the Black Panther Party. Carmichael did speak in the, they kind of have inserts of him in the Nina Simone, in the Netflix documentary, Nina Simone. And if you wonder how like I like absorb so much information, literally when they said Nina moved to Liberia in like the late 70s, what she dreamed of like a black utopia being. Now, I'm slightly aware of the history of Liberia. In the late 1800s, there was a back to Africa movement and African Americans went back and then they kind of created this elitist group above the indigenous Africans, indigenous Liberians that were there. I, I, I was wondering at that time period how much of that was a problem. So I like, I was reading up on 1970s Liberian politics. Sigmas be president to all the West African countries. Y'all got Liberia, Nigeria, and Ghana under y'all belt. Like, damn. If you hear something and it just strikes your interest, Google it, girl, and read you some ish. That's what I be doing. So church burnings are happening post the massacre at Emmanuel AME and they are not duly being reported. I believe we are currently at eight or nine churches that have been set on fire throughout the southern United States of America. I don't even really have much to link to because the articles and the information that's come out about it has been very, very insufficient. But it is clear. I don't even really feel like we need the church burnings to verify the state that we are in with the war on black Americans in the United States of America. Post the whole thing with Eric Garner in New York and homeboy not even home being on video and blatantly tackling Eric Garner in a way that illegal in the city of New York and getting off scotch free. At that point, I knew it was on. It was already hot. So like, yeah, we should talk about it more, but it's almost like I don't need more bad things to happen to us in order to get white people to understand, in order to get my own people to understand. Speaking of Emmanuel AME, they did put to rest South Carolina Senator Reverend Clementa P. 
Pinckney and Obama delivered the eulogy. Um, and it was very, very touching. He gave very black pastoral theatrics during his speech, but I felt like that was the tone of the entire service. Everybody was on 100. I definitely am not, I mean, I don't really, I don't really feel like there's that much to digest. Like, I don't need to, like, further digest Obama's blackness. Yes, Obama has turned a new leaf because, like, he, it's his last year of the presidency. Like, he's not running for re-election. Like, there isn't even any political position for him to hold in the United States post being the president. So, like, kind of, he's been worn thin and now he's kind of like, like, F it, I'm gonna do me. Like, I'm gonna be me and I'm gonna do me and y'all gonna accept it because I'm here. You can't impeach me now. Like, F it. I'm pretty happy with how Obama has responded to the Charleston massacre. So, I'm just not, I don't even have a whole lot of criticism there. I'm kind of curious as to why we're having such a hard time allowing people to discuss gun rights while also talking about the problem of racism in America. Like, why can't we, why all of a sudden are people who are so often fighting for the right to talk about multiple issues now kind of shitting on people who want to talk about gun rights? Like, gun rights aren't the end-all be-all, um, but I think that's part of the conversation is gun Shout out to the Supreme Court of the United States for, one, upholding a law that allows for fair housing practices. Y'all have been trying to act like we is really that post-race, girl, when we ain't. Secondly, for upholding Obamacare, F-U-G-O-P, and I hope we do not get Clinton fatigue because, um, I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, however you feel about it, it's very likely that Hillary Clinton is going to win the DNC, the Democratic primaries. And I just hope that we don't get Clinton fatigue and not turn out the polls and then, you know, Ted Cruz or God forbid, Chris Christie. The most celebrated ruling out of the Supreme Court this week was obviously marriage equality. So congratulations. You can all get married and you can all get divorced now. I just want to address something amongst my black people and my smart brown girls. I see you out here with your little memes questioning, well, why aren't we talking about black folk issues? Why aren't we talking about, all, like, y'all covert anti-gay sentiments. Look, I'm not really here for telling anybody how they need to rule their domain and their house. I grew up in a household where we were taught that being gay was wrong. My mama gave me the most hilarious of speeches when she thought I was a lesbian, whatever. Even if you believe that homosexuality is a sin, I don't get how like you have to counter the celebration of the law. You believe that homosexuality is a sin, so that means you're never gonna enter into a homosexual relationship. I have heard the reasoning that it's, it might negatively impact churches because if churches won't do weddings for gay couples, they can lose their nonprofit standing. That's not true. There's different sectors in nonprofit filings. And so religious organizations are filed a certain way. Secondly, marriage in America is a business deal. You do not get married, you do not get legally married by going to the church and having a pastor or reverend or whoever bless your marriage. In the United States, you get married by going to a government office and getting a marriage license. All the other stuff is freedom to express your marriage publicly however you would like to. So I just don't understand the concern about why, how gay marriage is gonna impact you because it won't. Speaking of the Supreme Court, and as we talked about, this thing with white mediocrity, y'all love when we shit on Iggy Azalea. Y'all love it. But Iggy Azalea uh, inspired this little white girl that's up here trying to fight against UT Austin's affirmative action policy. Now, let's talk about this. So currently, there's an affirmative action case of a mediocre white girl whose name doesn't even deserve to be uttered that has already gone to the Supreme Court. They put it back and told the federal courts that they have to revise they have to revisit the case because two, the circuit courts and the federal courts both said that UT Austin's affirmative action policy, they couldn't find any problems in how they do their affirmative action. Now, now it's gone back to the two courts again. They said the same thing again and now it's again being appealed to the Supreme Court. I don't know who, what, 
racist ass white person is funding for this case to continue to go to the Supreme Court, not once, but twice, because it's not that easy for your case in the United States to make it to the Supreme Court. Like, this is a big deal. The University of Texas, Austin, their policy is to automatically allow the top 10% of Texan students in. 92% of the admitted freshman class is made up of the top 10% of Texan students. So of the 8% that was left for this mediocre white girl to finagle her way in because she was not a top 10% Texan student. Homegirl is so mediocre that she graduated with a 3.6 GPA and 1180 out of 1600 on her SAT scores. So I graduated high school with a 3.7 and a 1280 on my SATs. 47 had worse grades than Homegirl and 42 of that 47 are white. So she's taken this case to Supreme Court, not once, but twice, because she feels like five black folk beat her out out of how many incoming freshmen? Like this is the dumbest ish ever. Speaking of diversity, Vogue. We're not surprised here. Vogue has a diversity problem, but it's not necessarily coming from his white writers. It's coming from, you know, I, I get, once you drink the Kool-Aid girl, it's hard to kind of keep up. But Elaine Weltworth, who is, she's like, she's an editor at Teen Vogue and every black person in media was super happy when um, Elaine was appointed to Teen Vogue as like the herald of diversity as a biracial black woman at Teen Vogue. But she recently went to Rwanda, which was real cute girl because how many people you know is going to Rwanda? We're not even gonna question how Elaine is, lives in New York City and is curious as to how people are gonna react to her Senegalese twist because Harlem, anybody? Then she does this feature on her braiding, getting her hair braided in Rwanda does not feature a single woman from Rwanda. Like how often do you meet or read about people going to visit Rwanda? You get your hair braided by the black women in Rwanda and you don't show nothing but their hands. And then you proceed to have photo collage of white women and light skinned like racially ambiguous women because she's saying the lead model was biracial and that's because that's what she identifies with but i'm like come on like it's not even it's not even a matter of like metering one's blackness it's that you just didn't have any point blank period darker skinned black women featured like at all like, i get it's teen vogue and if zendaya is like a thing for you who like hair by Susie, who does Solange's and Beyonce and all these other famous people's twists. And she kind of really put Havana twist back on the map as like a thing. It would have been so easy for that to be a really, really dope article that the kind of laziness and not even bothering with representing is what's most offensive. Then we move over to Vogue.com where Majan Carlos wrote an article, How Northwest Inspires a Generation of Natural Hair. When I tell you baby hairs rule the world. Well, she just wanted to post pictures of her niece on Vogue.com and she found a real cute and lazy excuse. You are going to take and start talking about thing, something that is inherently part of black women's identity, as is natural hair, and then skew it so far to the European side. It's like, especially when you have someone like Blue Ivy getting so much heat for how her parents allow her to wear her hair and it's only an issue because her hair is of a certain texture <sighs> you know how i feel about this girl you know we want to end on a really super happy note and we're going to give a big shout out to the uber special smart brown girl and a magical black girl misty copeland before becoming the first ever african-american principal of the american ballet theater girl i will rub y'all i will rub you with extra hot bath water epsom salts to help keep them feet girl together because we are so happy and she's just a gorgeous beautiful woman i like low-key would love to have her body i'm gonna start flexing what is it flex i don't know first first position second position plie jeté i'm gonna try all that now in the name of misty copeland who started dancing when she was like 12. how awesome is she thank you all for watching Hope you enjoyed and sipped along. Cheers to all of you. Links down below to help all my smart brown girls. And as always, thanks for supporting. If you haven't already, subscribe and comment down below. Click an ad on your way out. Deuces!